Okay. December 25th, creeping up fast. The chocolate in the advent calendar is running out, but don't worry. We're here to take that holiday stress away with a fun show, jam-packed with tips and tricks to make life easier. First up is a sweet idea to add extra charm to your holiday decor. Why buy when you can DIY? Here to show us how to build our own rustic centerpiece, Leanne Allaire Perot. <laughs> Tell me about this centerpiece that's, you know, maybe going to impress our family and friends. Well, I wanted to create something that wasn't very holiday specific. Yes. I wanted a centerpiece that I could leave up on my table right through as long as the snow's on the ground. So yes. I came up with this idea of making this rustic winter village. It's very modern because it's very simple and sculptural, but it's also using scrap wood from my workshop, mm. which for me, I love using up any waste that's around. Yeah. Uh, it cleans gorgeous. up my space and also looks beautiful and is really simple. So Stunning. when I say that I use scrap wood quite literally these are some examples of the pieces that I use they had some screw holes in them I yeah. tested some stain colors this is perfect the one thing if you are going out to purchase some wood to do this project think about getting different widths number one but the thickness you want a minimum of an inch and a quarter mm -hmm. because I turned these into candle holders as well yeah there's a few of them on the dining table that cute. I did a little drill bit in there which we're gonna talk about in a second but to get the peak if you have a compound miter saw that cuts on a 45 you're golden you, you can just <laughs> So where you can change the angle and yeah. you automatically cut so you have that perfect 45. If you don't, okay. but you've got a speed square, mm -hmm. all you need to do is mark yourself, well, a couple of straight lines uh, <laughs> on either side here. There you go. And then you'll use, uh, whether it's a skill saw or circular saw, just to cut out your peaks. Right? Perfect. Really, really simple. Literally, that's the only cutting you need to do. Good. And after that, I did give each of the pieces a bit of a sand because they can get a little rough and tumble. I actually use my mouse sander, palm sander, right. with a fine grit gator sanding pad on there just to smooth out. I like the rounded corners. Then it doesn't look like it stock looks lumber, right? Yeah. It gives it it's that tactile feel. Mm -hmm. So let's get to the little hole here that I yeah. did for the candle holder. Now I used a spade drill bit, a mm -hmm. one inch, which is important because that creates a hole large enough to then hold the secret ingredient, which is a little copper coupling. Were those so easy this is to find? Super easy. You can buy these individually at your home improvement store. Okay. You can pick these up. I got a like a little package of eight for a cheaper price. Good. Uh, so and the three quarter inch is the size, the width of this, because yeah. that fits perfectly into our one inch little hole there. Oh, that's beautiful. Right. Uh, the one thing I do mm. want to mention when you're using the spade drill bit mm -hmm. and, and drilling this, you don't just want to leave this on your tabletop and go all willy nilly with the drill. No. I I have a workbench that has clamps, yeah. horizontal clamps, to put that in and do it at a lower height because you're drilling down. So you Got want to make it. sure that you're really safe with doing this. It's not hard to do, but safety first. That's right. right. Or it'll Super fly important. all over the place. That's it. Okay, so we've done this. We've cut the wood. We've sanded it a little bit. What's our next step? So now we get into staining. So we're going to stain Which it. is one of my favorite favorite things to do, I find this to be so therapeutic. Oh, you love the staining. I love staining and painting. Okay. Uh, very, Good. like, unrationally love it. Well, I want you to um, come over and see our back deck. Well. <laughs> therapeutic. If, if I want to help you some out. some beverages involved, I'm there. Always. Yes. I love, like, you can be my therapy. Thank you. Uh, so I am using a color called Kona in an ultimate wood stain. Okay. What I love about this, like, see oh, the therapy dark. of this? It's nice and dark. Mm -hmm. But this is one coat coverage, and that's the thing. You can see how dark it is and how quickly it goes on to build up that gorgeous rich color it's beautiful the other thing that I love about ultimate wood stain this dries in one hour okay one hour mm -hmm. so this isn't a typical stain where you have to leave it overnight yeah. and then come back to you it. like that smell because I like that smell. I love the smell it's part of the therapy <gasps> It's like a marker. <laughs> right? Ooh, yes. Like so from so there, this is the part that is a little mind bendy. Yeah. We just finished staining and it looks beautiful. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna paint over top of the well, stain. Well, I was wondering why. How is like it's very dark, but these are not. Right. So this so you're is like, what you and, did. And why? You're thinking why? So the paint that I'm using is called chalked paint. Yeah. I'm using a light tint base in a color called Sensible Sage. Yeah. I also used another color called Icy Gray. Now with chalk paint what I love about it is you can just slap this on and the on even so better well. thing is this too will dry 
in one hour. Yeah. So let's call it an hour to cut and sand your wood, an yeah. hour to stain your wood, an hour to paint your wood. Mm -hmm. And now once this is dry, it's time for the final magical step that reveals why the heck we painted over stain. Yes. And that is to create this distressing look. Right. Now, how I did this, most people would just take their gator sanding block and rough up the edges. The thing that I didn't want to do was sand through so that that natural wood color came through. I wanted oh. to maintain the dark color. Mm -hmm. So I got to thinking, mm. this little DIY brain of mine. Mm -hmm. I work with chalk paint a lot. I spill it from time to time. It wipes up with a wet cloth. And I was right. thinking it cleans up so easily with water. Mm -hmm. What if instead of sanding, I tried wiping it off with water. So I don't want to say that I invented a new technique, Genius. but I kind of feel like I invented a new technique. Yeah. And I was pretty stoked about this. So let me show you. So this is just sat overnight. Yeah. As long as it's been dried for one hour, you can do this technique an hour later, 10 days later, whatever, because it's okay. a very soft finish. And if you give this a little rub, oh, wow. look at that stain coming through. It's so much easier than You're sanding. Brilliant. Right? So smart. It's also a lesson in yeah. like, against how it naturally is, do something totally. that works with how it is. So you're totally. that's very, very good. Yes, and the it's key, a metaphor for life, LA. Well, well, we well just gotta write go that on a pillow right? and I will buy it. <laughs> yes, I love that, true metaphor for life. So once you get all of this done, the, because the chalk paint is so soft, you can manipulate yeah. it. If you take off too much, you just go back in and put a little more paint. That's what's really flexible about this. Beautiful. The key is using a clear protective top coat, which okay. will give it that velvety soft finish and protect it. Once yeah. that's on, you're not rubbing anything off. It's right. super durable. So okay. that's really the key. This is gorgeous. Thank okay, you. so you also had some fun with the little placeholders as well. So it's all about the small details for me. Mm -hmm. I love those little touches. So because I use the copper couplings, I wanted to add in a little bit of extra copper yeah. into my tabletop. So I picked up the metallic finish in copper yeah. and spray painted some simple pine cones and then even just the littlest little bells here, which I put them on a skewer. It's like bell kebabs, right, to spray yeah. them. And <laughs> yeah. instead of holding them with your hand, you just put them on a little skewer and give them a little spray. Very very Simple. cute. Very well done, L.A. Um, incredible. And find the instructions for this project up at our website, cityline.com.